In this video, we're going to introduce second order rate laws and just in general, second order kinetics. So uh, in this video, what I want to do is just introduce the rate law for a second order reaction and uh, derive the equation for the half-life of a second order reaction. And in the next video, we'll actually look at an example of calculating rates for second order reactions. So first, what do we mean by second order reactions? Well, first let's consider just a general reaction where we have some reactant A that forms some products. What products it forms doesn't really matter right now. Just know that we have some uh, general reactant A that forms some products. So, um, so given this general reaction, we know that we can define a rate law for this reaction, right? We know that we can define the rate be via the rate of decomposition of A, right? So if we wanted to write out a rate law, right, we know we can define the rate via the rate of decomposition of A over time. And we know that there will be some reaction rate constant, right? Regardless of the rate order, there will always be a rate constant that relates the concentration of the reactant to the overall reaction rate. The only thing that's gonna change here is if we know that it follows second order kinetics, that means it's going to have a second order dependence on the concentration of A or a quadratic dependence on the concentration of A here. So this would be a rate law for second order reaction. So this is a second order differential rate law to be exact, right? This is a differential rate law for second order reaction. Now, in the one of the previous videos talking about a first order reaction, uh, where we looked at going from the differential rate law to the integrated rate law, I actually explicitly showed the calculus in the integration to go from a differential rate law to an integrated rate law. I'm not gonna do that in this one, but you can follow that same procedure in order to derive the equation that I'm about to give you. But um, if you do the integration, then you will get the integrated rate law. And the integrated rate law will be one over the concentration of A is equal to KT plus one over the initial concentration of A, right? So um, again, just integrating on both sides uh, for respect to T, you're gonna go from time zero to time T. And for the concentration, you're going from an initial concentration, A naught, to a final concentration, A. And so once you do that, you get these the integrated rate law for second order reaction, right? Which I've shown here. Now note that just like for the first order reaction, you end up with a Y equals MX plus B linear type of equation, right? You get Y, MX plus B, right? So this means that if we were to plot the inverse of the concentration over time, that would give us a linear relationship for this order of reaction, right? So if we were to make a plot here, right, if we were to sketch out a plot here and then on a y-axis, if we put one over the concentration of our reactant and the x-axis is time, right? For a second order reaction, this would give us a straight line relationship. There would be a linear relationship between the inverse concentration and time given by the integrated rate law. Right. OK, so that gives us the integrated rate law for a second order reaction. Now, how would we get the half life? Keep in mind the half life at T one half our half life. We know that the concentration of our reactant is going to be half its initial concentration. Right. So a naught over two half the initial concentration that doesn't doesn't matter whether it's first order second order third order 15th order it doesn't matter what the rate order is this is always going to be true for uh the half-life for any reaction the only thing that changes here is the equation for the integrated rate law so we have to do the same thing that we did for the first order rate law but now we have to do it for this integrated rate law but it's going to be the same thing so we're going to go ahead and plug in here to uh, derive the half-life equation. So derive the half-life expression for a second order reaction. Right. So we got uh, since we know the concentration is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be uh, the initial concentration, uh, one half the initial concentration. 
I'm going to just plug that in here. So we'll have the initial concentration divided by two. It's going to be equal to K T one half plus one over the initial concentration. Right. So all I've done here is just, you know, noted that we're dealing explicitly with the half life and we're going to be uh, at that point. The concentration is going to be half the initial concentration. This just allows for the algebra to cancel out. Right. So our KT one half is going to be two over the initial concentration minus one over the initial concentration. Right. All I've done here, just move this guy to the other side. Right. And then for the denominator here, this can flip. So you have two over um, the initial concentration of a rather than one over uh, concentration of the initial concentration divided by two. OK, so this easily cancels out here. Right. So two minus one to give you one. Right. So then basically you just end up with one over K times the initial concentration. And so this would be your expression for the half-life for a second order reaction, right? All we've done here is just do the exact same process that we went through for a first order reaction, except now we have a different integrated rate law to consider, right? Um, so the first, and the first time we did this, we used the first order uh, integrated rate law. Now we're using the rate law for a second order reaction, but it's the same principle, right? At the half-life, your concentration is going to be half the initial concentration. So we're just plugging that back in and deriving for the half-life. So here, I mean, biggest takeaways, this is the integrated rate law for the second order reaction. And this expression is the expression for the half-life, right? Uh, in the next video, we're going to go through an actual example, look at a reaction that is known to have second order reaction kinetics and go through and calculate its uh, concentration at given times, its half-lives, and actually start to put these uh, equations that we looked at in this video to some good use.